Hi, and welcome to the next episode of the EdUp AI podcast. I'm super excited. Today, I'm talking with Sammy Walker Herrera. She is the founder of Speak Y'all, and she's also a career consultant at Carnegie Mellon University. So, Sammy, I'm going to hand it over to you, and here's my question for you. How can AI help students improve their public speaking skills? Thanks for having me on here, Jason. Fantastic question. AI presents a really strong opportunity for students to first get used to recording themselves practicing. It builds this accountability in public speaking because the thing is someone can write about public speaking. They can watch a bunch of YouTube videos about public speaking. They can read books about public speaking. They can watch 20 TED Talks about public speaking. But until you open your mouth and start speaking in a way where it feels a little bit risky or a little bit vulnerable, the needle is not going to move. And students are not going to move out of that comfort zone that they have. Even if a student is already a strong speaker, I've worked with clients who they can speak fine in a room with 200 people, but as soon as a camera is on, they flop. And that's just because that adds to them personally that extra layer of pressure versus other folks, the camera doesn't really matter to them. So it builds that ability to manage being recorded. But again, it also provides that accountability. As a public speaking coach, I don't know if my clients have practiced their public speaking unless I get a video recording back showing me that they've practiced. And perhaps they're practicing less to be on Zoom or on a podcast kind of like this. They're practicing for an in-person engagement. However, I still want to see everything that they're doing to prep for the in-person engagement. Are they wearing the nice blazer they told me about? Are they wearing their heels? Are they speaking? Are they practicing holding a mic, for example? Are they shifting their eye contact? based on, hey, I know I'm going to have an audience of 15 students, or hey, I know I'm going to, going to be speaking at a student conference with 200 students. So the AI presents those strong opportunities. What I'll also say is starting to record yourself provides a baseline. And one cool thing about a lot of AI tools, some of the ones that I'm familiar with, for example, are big interview which is something that Carnegie Mellon uses, Udly, which I personally use with my clients, and Talk Me Up, which is actually also founded by ACMU alumna, who I've been, and it's a system I've been looking into. What they do is they parse the information from the speech and they generate data for the person who is speaking. Now, some systems, they actually generate data. So let's say they popped in this podcast it would generate data about my speaking and your speaking. And pretty much all the systems would say I'm dominating the conversation right now. <laughs> because we're not hearing it from you real quick, but that's totally fine. But each system provides different types of data. What I'll say is big interview provides the base level data. What's your pacing? How many filler words do you have? Doesn't really answer things like, did you answer the question? It's a lot more of the speaking data, volume, there's also an eye contact tracker, which can be helpful for virtual interviews to sense, hey, I'm looking at the camera, which is the best way to give the perception that you're looking at the interviewer, even though, for example, now I'm looking at you, looks like I'm not looking at you anymore. Udly is really interesting as a system because what it does is it does parse what you're saying. It creates a summary of what you've talked about, and that can help the speaker get more of a sense of, oh, did I come across strongly? Did I answer the question, for example? It also includes afterward AI-generated questions, like a Q&A of sorts, like what types of questions someone might be asked after they speak in an interview or at a conference or in a meeting, for example, at work. I work with a lot of clients who they're just trying to build their confidence speaking up at work. So they use that system to get more of a sense of, hey, how can I prepare for those Q&As? Because a lot of people, when they present for a 30-minute presentation, they probably got it locked down in point. They have their script. They have their slides as reminders. But the Q&A is that impromptu speaking that scares some people. So it allows prep for that Q&A there. 
Now, Talk Me Up is interesting because it actually focuses a lot more on the content of what you're saying. So it actually measures I, concepts such as like persuasiveness, empathy, uh, authority, for example. But the thing is, ignoring all the specific benefits of these tools, it allows a student or any person who's starting off with that baseline of data. Okay, I have a strong, sol I have a solid speaking pace. However, I have so many fillers. I have every filler. I have the filling that's come from a package from Amazon. That's how much filler I have, right? And so when we have that baseline, it helps people decide what's the first thing I'm going to work on. And that's when going to a book or a YouTube video or working with a public speaking coach or even a career coach who's really strong at interview coaching can be really helpful to move the needle on that one thing. Now, if someone is using a tool specifically to measure those things, what I don't recommend is always loading your video into the tool. Because if you're every single day trying to track the data, it's like when folks go onto the scale when they're measuring their weight and they get disheartened by the different time of the day or water weight or things like that, right? So if you're using the tool to specifically look at that data, I recommend only doing that once a week and really measuring what your next video is on that baseline at all times. Not in the week before or two weeks before, but from when I started public speaking to now, how have I shifted? And don't even only focus on that data. How do I come across? How do I feel in my body compared to how I felt in that moment? Yeah, that's awesome. That's so much information um, and so many different <laughs> tools for people to kind of play with. Um, one of the things that I, I love that you mentioned is mm -hmm. using AI to create a system of accountability for students. And that's so yes. huge. So I teach public speaking. I, you know, teach it in person, teach it online. And I think you're right. The temptation when a student learns public speaking is to read a public speaking textbook and then not really move into that space when they were just applying it and trying it out and feeling things out. And every time I talk to my students about public speaking, I'm astounded when I ask the question, like, what kind of public speaker do you want to be? Right? What do you mm. want? Your, how do you want yourself to come across that my students many of the times are not like ready for that question? Because they're just they're not really thinking about imbibing their public speaking persona they have one with their own personality they're just thinking about what the book said right and so there's something that goes i think when we practice something like public speaking we start to get a sense of how we can actually be ourselves within certain parameters right we all want to have certain ways of speaking and coming across that are time honored and time tested but we also don't want to lose ourselves in the process. And there are a lot of public speaking for me, a lot of teaching it is encouraging people to think about how you don't have to just like get rid of your personality. And the other thing I think is so important we talk about with Talk Me Up and other programs is how feedback is being delivered. I think that a lot of my students, they tend to think about public speaking in a very holistic way. So you just give a speech and then list every single thing that needs to be changed going forward. Forward. And there's something that is so sabotaging about that. And so what we really need is very ways to target feedback, right? And say, all right, mm -hmm. these are the things that you did really well. These are the things that you maybe could improve. Here's one thing to work on, right? And just one thing. Because I think that whenever you give a student, at least in my experience, really anyone, five to 10 things to work on you can't do that. Right? It's just a matter of if there's one thing you're really struggling with, you focus on that next time and you kind of go from there. Um, so I love that focus on targeted feedback. So, and I do want to wrap up because we're right around the eight minutes because it, it yeah. goes fast. So any other just tips you would give to a student who say they're struggling with public speaking right now and they're thinking about using AI, are there any tips you can give them about just how to move forward and how to do that? Hmm. I can think of two things related to just what you talked about right here. So one of them was about personality and authenticity, right? A lot of people assume they have to speak in a certain way to be considered impressive, to be considered authoritative, to be considered professional at all. So what I'll say is if there's someone who you feel is a solid speaker in their own right, you can 
put their information into one of those AI tools. And what you'll see is they're not a perfect speaker either. They have filler words. Sometimes they rush their pace. Sometimes they use weak words, those things that the AI tools are looking at to recognize, wow, it's a lot more about the message overall than it being perfectly constructed, than going by that public speaking textbook used in the class. The other piece is what I'll say is when it comes to feedback, sometimes some folks want a whole like 360 awareness, right? I want to know every single thing I'm bad at, but they forget to think about every single thing they're good at as well. Like there's so many speaking strengths people don't realize. And it's just flip-flopping flip those things that they don't think about. Like, hey, I have great volume. That's such an important public speaking skill that people undervalue because they're afraid, oh, well, I, I looked a little nervous. So with that, I think organizing feedback is one of the best ways for people to actually use feedback. So the way I organize feedback for my clients is the three Vs, verbal, vocal, visual. Verbal is what I said, vocal is how I said it, visual is how it looked. And when we organize it that way, we can then d dive deeper into, hey, these are things you can improve. Pick one, let's ignore the rest. You're aware of them, but let's focus. I love that model. And one of the things that really stuck out to me as you were talking was how we can use AI to demystify our models. And that is mm. huge, right? Because for me, for my students, if they're struggling with public speaking, anyone they listen to online or watch a speech from, there's this aura of perfectness, perfection around them. And so any tool that allows them to kind of see how that's not true and how you're right, they have filler words, they have moments when maybe they lose their place and they get back on, into it. And just focusing on those moments by running it through, through a program and just seeing what that speaker actually did and how in the end it didn't derail the speech. I mean, actually there are ways that making mistakes along the way makes it more authentic and actually builds up that connection as opposed to pushing against it. So I love that idea. And that's it. We're about 12 minutes or so, which is awesome. There's so much great content in this. Thank you, Sammy, for coming and talking to us about AI and public speaking. Of course. Thank you again for having me. And don't for forget students, most speakers, so many of those big speakers have coaches. Don't always compare yourself to someone who's already been coached. That's a great point. Thank you, Sammy.